Have you ever wondered how one family's internal feud could lead to a nationwide conflict? Let's take a stroll down the corridors of history to the time of the Plantagenet dynasty, a family whose internal power struggles would set England ablaze. The Plantagenets were far from an ordinary family, their lineage traced back to William the Conqueror, and they were crowned kings and queens of England for over 300 years. However, their reign wasn't all pomp and pageantry. The Plantagenets were plagued with a complex web of familial rivalries, a ticking time bomb that was set off by the death of King Edward III in 1377. Edward III's reign had been long and prosperous, but his death left a power vacuum. He had many descendants, each with their own claim to the throne. This was the beginning of a succession crisis that would divide England. Edward's eldest son, the Black Prince, had predeceased him, leaving his 10-year-old grandson Richard as the next in line. Richard II was crowned king, but his youth and inexperience made him a puppet in the hands of powerful nobles. This caused resentment among other members of the Plantagenet family who believed they had a stronger claim to the throne. The seeds of discontent were sown. On one hand, there was the House of Lancaster, descendants of Edward III's third son, John of Gaunt. On the other hand, the House of York, descended from Edward III's second and fourth sons, believed they had a superior claim. What followed was a tangled mess of political maneuvering alliances and betrayals. The Plantagenet family was a hornet's nest of ambition and rivalry, each branch seeking to assert its dominance. The throne of England became the coveted prize in this high-stakes game of thrones. The death of King Edward III set the stage for a power struggle that would divide a nation. With the stage set, the curtain was about to rise on one of the most tumultuous periods in English history, the Wars of the Roses. A war not between countries, but between cousins. In the midst of this power struggle, a king's weakness sows the seeds of conflict. As we delve into the reign of King Henry VI, a member of the Lancastrian branch of the Plantagenets, we find a reign marked by instability and weakness. This king, unfortunately, was plagued by struggles with mental illness, a condition poorly understood in the 15th century, which significantly impaired his ability to rule effectively. Henry VI was crowned king as a baby, following the death of his father, Henry V. His youth and the subsequent regency period led to a power struggle among the nobility, as various factions attempted to control the young king and through him, the kingdom. This struggle continued into Henry's adulthood as his frequent bouts of what is now believed to have been schizophrenia rendered him periodically incapable of ruling. During these periods of incapacitation, ambitious nobles saw opportunities to gain power. Among them were Richard, Duke of York, and his allies who began to challenge the authority of the king and his Lancastrian supporters. Henry's inability to assert control over his kingdom and maintain the loyalty of his subjects further destabilized his reign and set the stage for the Wars of the Roses. Henry's reign was not only marked by personal weakness, but also by political and military failures. His attempt to hold on to the English territories in France inherited from his father resulted in a disastrous and costly war, leading to the loss of most of these territories and creating discontent at home. In a kingdom seeking strong leadership, Henry VI's weakness left a power vacuum that others were eager to fill. His reign saw the rise of powerful nobles who, dissatisfied with his rule, began to vie for power, setting the stage for the Wars of the Roses. His mental illness, combined with his political and military failures, created a perfect storm that would lead to one of the most tumultuous periods in English history. Enter the House of York, a rival branch with a strong claim to the throne. The House of York emerged from the shadows of the Plantagenet dynasty, led by a man of ambition and charisma, Richard, Duke of York. This was a house that bore the emblem of the White Rose, a symbol that would soon become synonymous with one of the bloodiest periods in English history. Richard wasn't just any nobleman. He was the great-great-grandson of King Edward III through his mother, Anne Mortimer. This lineage, he believed, gave him a stronger claim to the English throne than Henry VI, the Lancastrian king. But it wasn't just about bloodlines. Richard was a capable leader, a trait that many felt Henry VI and lacked. Richard's claim to the throne was met with mixed reactions. Some saw him as a beacon of hope, a potential king who could restore stability to a kingdom marred by economic and social tensions. Others viewed him as a threat, a usurper intent on seizing the throne from a rightful king. Despite the opposition, Richard was undeterred. He was steadfast in his belief that he was the rightful king of England. 
a belief that was not without merit. After all, his lineage traced back to Edward III and his leadership skills were apparent, but belief alone does not a king make. Richard knew this. He needed to gather support to rally those who shared his vision of a stable, prosperous England under Yorkist rule, and so he began to build alliances to forge relationships with other powerful families. His influence grew, and with it the threat to Henry VI's reign. As Richard's power increased, so did the tension between the houses of York and Lancaster. It was clear that a storm was brewing, a storm that would soon engulf the whole of England in a war that would last for over three decades. Richard of York didn't just want power, he believed he had a rightful claim to it. But the stage for war wasn't set by royal rivalry alone. The lead-up to the Wars of the Roses was marked by economic instability and social unrest. The kingdom was in a state of turmoil, with high taxes and inflation stirring discontent among the populace. The economic instability was not a sudden occurrence but a gradual process that took place over several decades. The reign of King Henry VI was marked by economic difficulties. Trade declined, coinage was devalued and the king's extravagant spending led to a mounting national debt. This in turn led to the imposition of high taxes which burdened the common people and the nobility alike. But the economic strain was not all. The social fabric of the kingdom was also fraying. The nobility, once a unified class, was now divided. King Henry's favoritism towards certain nobles bred resentment among others who felt sidelined. This discontent among the nobility created a fertile ground for rival factions to emerge and vie for power. Furthermore, the common people were growing restless. The high taxes, coupled with a series of poor harvests, led to widespread hardship. The discontent was further exacerbated by the perceived corruption and incompetence of the king's favorites. This social unrest often erupted in rebellions and uprisings, adding to the overall instability of the kingdom. These economic and social tensions did not just exist in a vacuum. They played a crucial role in fueling support for the rival factions within the Plantagenet dynasty. The House of Lancaster and the House of York both capitalized on this discontent, positioning themselves as the solution to the kingdom's problems. In a way, these tensions acted as a catalyst, accelerating the pace towards conflict. The economic instability eroded the king's authority. The social unrest created an environment ripe for rebellion, and the discontent among the nobility provided the rival factions with the support they needed to challenge for the throne. With the kingdom in turmoil, the stage was set for a clash that would change the course of history. In 1455, tensions boiled over into open conflict. The stage was set in the town of St. Albans, a scene that would host the first major skirmish of the Wars of the Roses. The House of York, led by Richard Duke of York, had grown tired of the perceived weakness and ineffectiveness of King Henry VI's rule. The Yorkist forces, eager to seize control and assert their claim to the throne, marched toward St. Albans, where the Lancastrian king and his men were stationed. On one side the Lancastrian forces loyal to King Henry VI stood firm, ready to defend their monarch and squash the Yorkist challenge. However, they were unaware of the full extent of the Yorkist forces' resolve and the determination that spurred them on. The Yorkist forces on the other hand were driven by a potent mix of ambition, frustration, and a strong belief in their right to rule. They were prepared to engage in battle to prove their point and were not deterred by the prospect of bloodshed. As the two sides clashed, the town of St. Albans trembled under the weight of their conflict. The battle was fierce, but short. The Yorkists, with strategic cunning and a ruthless desire for power, quickly overpowered the Lancastrians. King Henry VI was taken prisoner, marking a significant Yorkist victory. This first battle of St. Albans, though relatively small in scale compared to the battles that would follow, marked the beginning of a series of armed hostilities between the House of Lancaster and the House of York. It set a precedent of violent conflict as a means to resolve the dynastic dispute, a precedent that would be followed for the next three decades. The aftermath of the battle left the nation in shock. The once stable realm was now on the brink of a full-blown civil war. The Wars of the Roses had begun, promising decades of conflict and altering the course of English history forever.